Hi everyone, welcome to my live creative time take two for this week. Um, my name is Mandy Witherby from Mandy's Paper Craft Creations and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Sydney, Australia. Um, I'm so sorry, I went to go live um, just a few moments ago and had all kinds of internet issues. So I rebooted my router and we're starting again. And so fingers crossed that this time works and that everything is happy um, and the internet holds out for us today. Well, this time round, I should say. So, my apologies, I'm a little bit late today. Um, but yes, technical issues, it happens. <laughs> so, um, but here we go, we'll try again. So, I have got a couple of really cute projects to share with you today. Um, hopefully, we'll get through both uh, because they are quick and easy cards uh, that you can create at home. And we're going to be using some retiring products. And this could be the last day that I use retiring products because from next week, I'm probably going to want to start playing with all the new products that are coming out. So um, let me just check that everything is happy and working and I can see comments before I dive in. So let me just get all of that ready. Um, pop that over there. So as you're jumping on, say hi. Let me know that you are here. And if this is your first time watching, let me know where you're watching from. Um, I will upload this to my YouTube channel after I finish filming here on Facebook as well. So thank you all to my YouTube replay warriors. I appreciate, uh, I appreciate you watching. Thank you so much. And uh, to anyone watching on Facebook or watching the replay, I should say, on Facebook, thank you as well to you. All right, so let's see if I can bring this up. Okay, good. That all looks good over there on the computer. Now let me see if I can get this up here on my on my um my iPad. I was gonna say on my Facebook, but yes, it's on my Facebook. <laughs> all right, volume down. There we go. Okay, everything is working. Everything is happy. So all good. All good. Ah, you might notice my little brooch today. I brought along my little Casper brooch. This is um, in memory of Casper, my cat. I had, well, actually, I've had two cats. I've had Casper and Jet. I've had two black cats. The first one was my brother's. Um, and then when he left home, he left the cat at home with us. So it became our cat. And then he migrated down to my neighbours and it became their cat and my cat. <laughs> so he, he um, yes, he, he liked to share himself um, with our our neighbourhood back then. Back then there wasn't such strict restri restrictions as what there is nowadays with um, with pets. Um, but yes, but he was lovely and he was an, a very affectionate cat. Um, did get in a few fights though. But um, the second cat I got, Casper, he was an indoor cat. And um, he, I had him from two days old. He was just a baby, a tiny baby, new baby when I got him. Um, so a little backstory. In in my younger years, I um, not that I'm super old yet, but um, when I was much younger, I worked in a veterinary clinic. Um, I went on from there to manage a pet store, and from there I went into the corporate world um, with banking, and then eventually then had my children, then ended up in. Um, the office in a preschool so yeah I've kind of done animals and children <laughs> so um but yes but working in the veterinary clinic was um really great i had lots of fantastic experiences there and i love animals of course so um as people that work in veterinary clinics normally do um but yes so the this little litter this litter of kittens i think there was four were brought into the veterinary clinic when i was working there and um, they were like only a couple of days old. They're about two days old or something. And they were found in a box in the bush. So it was really sad that somebody had um, had put them there. Um, but anyway, they were rescued. They were brought to the veterinary clinic. And um, we tag teamed, um, the vet nurses and I, we tag teamed um, to take them home because they needed um, feeding every couple of hours and toileting. We had to manually toilet them and things like that because... Yeah, that's part of what the mother would normally do. So um, anyway, um, eventually they came to live with me 
and um, I had my mum used to get up with me through the night to help me feed them because there was four of them and of course they all wanted to be fed at the same time and we had the little tiny bottles and special um, kitten formula we had to make up for them um, but yeah and then they came and lived with me and then um, I rehomed I think I actually think one of them didn't survive in the early days so I think we were left with three one of them uh, two of them rehomed one with my best friend at the time and one with somebody else who she knew and then I kept Casper so Casper was um, my little black kitten and he was such a sweetheart and he was brought up with my two little dogs so half the time he thought he was a dog and he used to sleep uh, when we moved when then I got married um, we kept the animals all the dogs were kept outside but Casper was inside outside then and he um, would go and sleep with the dogs and um, or he'd sleep in the house he he had the choice so depending on where he wanted to sleep and then we used to lock them like in the garage overnight so he'd sleep in the dogs area in the garage overnight um, or he'd sleep in the house with um, we had another cat as well but you, we used to try and keep them separate for sleeping at night time um, but yeah anyway so he was a beautiful beautiful cat he was so affectionate and such a gorgeous cat but um yeah he didn't he didn't live a long life i think he lived till he was eight and um then he went lame in his back legs he just um he'd had a few other health issues a few skin issues and things like that so he wasn't a super well cat um and then he just he went lame in his back legs and didn't have a tick or anything like that he just, uh, we're not sure if something went out in his back or what it was, but yeah, so sadly we had to have him put down because um, he just couldn't, he just couldn't function and no matter what we did, he, he um, yeah, he just couldn't walk. So poor little Casper, he was such a beautiful cat. So this is my little Casper brooch, remind me of Casper and he used to love to sit in the window too, like on my brooch, so yeah, all right. So, hi, Dimity. How are you? Great to have you here with us today. Hi, Angela. Great to have you with us as well. Um, uh, oh, two things not to work with, Dimity. I know, right? Animals and children, and I've done both. So, and I loved both. <laughs> so, <laughs> don't believe everything they say. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it was it was good times. I actually worked in two different veterinary clinics. Um, one I was training up to be, I started in the kennels and then was training up to be a vet nurse. Um, and then I left there and went and man managed a pet store for the same um, owner. And also used to help with the other branch of the veterinary clinic that was right next to the pet store. And then um, the pet store closed and then... I went to work for the bank but then when we got engaged my husband and I got engaged I went and did some um, weekend work at another veterinary clinic just in the um just in the kennels on the weekends while we were saving up for um our new home our first home so I worked there for I don't know how long I was there for not super long because then we got married and moved um away so um yeah I couldn't work there anymore but um I was there yeah probably for 12 or 18 months or something I don't know but um, yeah really interesting and, and loved working with the the animals but you know there's a lot of sadness too because it's awful seeing them coming in and in pain and not well and um, yeah and losing some and yeah so happy sad then we see all the little strays come in and we we um, you know take them under our wing and care for them and yeah, had a few had a few beautiful ones come in. Another one I remember was um, a beautiful tortoise shell cat. She was gorgeous, and I named her Chancy. It was like a French name, and um, oh, she was the most beautiful cat. But um, they rehomed her eventually. But she was gorgeous, so she stayed with us for a little while. Anyway, let's jump into some. You know, I could I could talk about all my animal experiences for a really really long time. If ever you want to chat animals. <laughs> send me a message or an email and um yeah and uh we we can chat animals funnily enough after um stopping work at the veterinary clinic um i because i didn't work closely with animals i still had my own animals at home my own dogs cats and birds but um and guinea pigs but i didn't work closely with them 
I developed severe sensitivity, particularly to cats. Um, and all of my children are actually allergic to cats too. So we could never have another cat now as much as I love them. Um, we couldn't have another one. We're way too allergic. Um, and also dogs. However, I'm not allergic to Cali. I was allergic to our Shih Tzu a little bit, but not as much because they have more sort of woolly fur rather than fur. But short-haired dogs, I'm terrible with short-haired dogs or really, really fluffy dogs. Um, but Cali, I don't seem to be allergic to, so uh, which is really fantastic. Hi, Angelique. How are you? Great to have you with us today. So, yeah, so that's a little bit about my, uh, my working history. So um, there you go. All right, well, let's jump into a little bit of Stampin' Up! news now that I've um, got you all here and everything is working and the internet is playing nice now. Um, yeah, so funnily enough, my daughter's internet up in Queensland also went off a couple of days ago. So I don't know what's going on at the moment with all this in these internet issues. <laughs> anyway, all right, let's jump into a little uh, quick few things um, that's happening in the Stampin' Up! world before we jump into um, our crafting. So you all probably know by now that we have got the last chance sales on the mo at the moment. Um, up to 60% off the retiring products from the current annual catalogue. So this is the one that's retiring. Sorry about the uh, reflections there. And the January to April 2024 mini catalogue also retiring. So they're both retiring and they will be finishing up on the 30th of April. So that's next Tuesday, Tuesday of next week. So that's when this promotion is going to end. So if there were any products that you still had on your wish list from those two catalogues, be sure to grab them. Um, products are selling out, so be sure to jump on and um, grab those while you still can before they retire for good and um, snap up some bargains while you are there. Now, also, just to give you a heads up, if you are a subscriber to my newsletter, you will already know this because I put out my newsletter at the end of last week and I let all of my subscribers know and if you're not yet a subscriber, feel free to subscribe to my newsletter. You can do that at my blog, which is mandyspapercraftcreations.blogspot.com. And you can subscribe there to my newsletter. Um, but there are going to be some price increases from the 1st of May. So things like cardstock, some of your tools, some of your adhesives, um, some of the colouring tools... Uh, are increasing as well and a few bits and bobs so um, but particularly too I know a lot of people have been um, buying up cardstock now before that goes up in price um, envelopes as well will be going up um, so yeah so if you're putting in a last chance list then consider perhaps put stocking up on some of those um, essentials as well uh, before the prices go up so, um, yeah, with the cost of everything, the cost of living and the cost of producing these products, unfortunately, some things have had to go up. Um, Stampin' Up! do try to keep the prices down as much as possible, but um, to maintain the quality of the products that they, um, that they give to us or that they have for us um, and the production of those and um, getting the, the, the products and things like that and the, the raw materials even, like, you know, we all know. The, the economy at the moment, with the way that things are, everything is going up in price. So, um, yeah. So anyway, so I just wanted to give you a heads up on that so that you knew that was coming. So you could grab any of those things that you might want um, now that will be going up. Um, yeah, so you can save a little bit now before the, the price increase. Hey, Fee, how are you? Great to have you with us today. All right. Now we have got... The brand new annual catalogue coming out. It's going to be starting from the 1st of May. Now, my customers who have ordered with me in the last six months have already been sent their catalogues. And I know that some of you have already been receiving them because you've been letting me know, which is fantastic. So that's exciting. If you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator here in Australia and you would like one of these catalogues, um, let me know. I'd love to send one out to you. In fact, I will pop up my link here in the um, the chat, in the comments, on, and over on um, YouTube when I upload this video, all of my links will be um, in the description of the video, so you'll be able to um, grab all of my links there. 
but let me just put up my catalog request link for you now there we go all right this is a beautiful catalog and i spent time yesterday and last night i was watching a little bit of netflix last night and i went through and i did all of my um labels now i'm not sure i might um end up getting one spiral bound i might end up getting a copy spiral bound i'm not sure yet but for for now to help me to find things in the new catalog i went through and i labeled all the different sections that i wanted to reference and this is the start of my wish list of some of those new products. So you can see that there. Um, so that's how I've um, done mine. But with the new catalog coming up, I always do product shares. So I have got um, some product shares that are going to be available and there are three choices for you or you can get all of them. There's a QR code here as well. So if I hold this up to the camera, if you scan that qr code so if you open up photos on your um, phone and then you scan this code and then click on the link that will come up on your phone um, that'll take you through to the registration form and you can have a closer look at what is included in my um, product shares and samplers okay so it's open now for registration registrations are going to close on thursday the 2nd of may Okay, so you can either go to um, my website to get the, the link. So you look for the 2nd of May um, on my calendar there and you'll see the link. Or you can click on this QR code. Oh, good. The QR code's working. Amber has te just tested it for me. Fantastic. So there you go. So click on the QR code. That'll take you through to the, um, the registration form and you can check all of the details and what you get in all of those different um, product shares and samplers that I have on offer and you can choose which one you would like and what works best for you and then um, I can get those out to you um, next month um, all right hey Megan how are you great to have you with us haven't seen you for a little while well haven't seen you with us for a little while I did see you recently down in Melbourne which was awesome <laughs> oh fee's working on some cards as she watches that's awesome fee great um megan said i've heard with the new design of the catalog it doesn't bind well oh thank you for the heads up the index is very close to where it is bound ah good pointer thank you megan because yes i haven't haven't had a close look at that yet oh yes yeah, actually, yeah, I might have to have a closer look at the pages, which I can't do online um, because I can't show you the inside of the catalog yet until it goes live. But yeah, I might have a closer look at that and um, check that out. Thanks, Megan. Thanks for that heads up. We'll see how we go. All right. Well, um, I might tip the camera down. Feel free to keep chatting with me. Ask me any questions that you might have because I will keep looking up at the screen. I can see your comments there. Um, so I'll keep checking that and I've got Amber here as a moderator as well. She's in the comments. So if I miss a question, Amber will jump in and answer it. Um, Amber is my daughter and lovely assistant, best assistant in the world. And um, so she will help me with answering those questions. She may have to duck in and out with the dog. That's all. So um, yeah, if she misses something, hopefully I'll pick it up and vice versa. But let's put the camera down onto the desktop and I'll show you what we are creating today. Oh, have you got your cuppers, by the way? I've got my, my Stampin' Up! mug. This was a special mug given to um, uh, those of us who went to on stage and were eligible to go to the VIP room. So for um, yeah, certain titles and above, we got these mugs. And I really love it in the craft room because it's got a... A zipper top with a um, closure so I can close it so I'm not going to spill it and it keeps my tea nice and warm so in fact I think it's at the right temperature now for drinking it was a bit hot before so hopefully you've got your cuppers let me know if you're crafting along with me or if you were just sitting back and relaxing today all right um oh Megan you had a little accident after you saw me in Melbourne in March oh no I've been resting and trying to heal oh I hope you're okay oh no that's not good at all oh dear oh well I hope you're feeling a lot better all right let's tip the camera down I'm just going to cover it up cover up the um 
the camera there so I don't make you all dizzy while I transition the the view. So here we go. Bear with me one moment. Okay. So let's see how that is looking. We will move the keyboard because we don't need that now. And I think my camera's not quite straight. So let's get that straightened up and level, still not level. Because if it's not level, it gives you a really warped view of the desk. I think that's a bit better. Oh, that looks pretty straight too. Good. Okay, look at my yucky desktop. <laughs> I need to get a new, um, so this is a um, uh, photography background that I have on my desktop. And this one I've had for a few years now and it's getting quite scratched and marked. So I think I'm gonna have to get a new one soon. I do I do actually have another one. I have a um, sort of like a marble effect one, but I like this one with the wood look because I've got the straight lines that help me um, line everything up for my my filming so I have to move that down a little bit lower so you can see it I think I've zoomed in a little bit closer today we'll see how we go I might need to zoom back out a little bit um oh no thank you uh the doctor said probably another eight weeks oh my goodness did you have a fall Megan did you break something what happened that's not good at all all right, so um, we are going to be using today, you know what, I'm just going to pop this here for a moment, just in case you missed that QR code before and you want to grab it now, I thought it might be nice and still on the desk. So feel free to grab that QR code. Um, oh my goodness, you got bitten by a big dog. Oh, you poor thing. Oh, that's awful. Oh, that's very traumatic as well. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. I've actually, talking about working at the veterinary clinic, I've had that at the veterinary clinic as well. Um, so I know how awful that can be, Megan. Oh, I'm so sorry. Another eight weeks to heal. Oh, my goodness. That's terrible. Well, keep resting up and looking after yourself. Um, yep. Yeah. So there you go. So there's my QR code for my product shares. So be sure to check that out. Okay, so today I have got two projects. Hang on, let me move my catalogue. Two projects. Now, these projects are ones that we actually... I forgot to tell you about my weekend. Um, I had my April card buffet on, um, on Saturday. And so these are two of the cards from my card buffet. I thought I'd share them with you because some of these products are going to be retiring. So, um, so let me just, here we go. All right. So here we go. This is the first one. This is my cute little Hello Tulips card. That's what I'm calling it. This is one of the ones that the ladies could choose on the weekend. Um, and they did, they did actually choose this one. So at my card buffet, I have a range of cards and there'll be different numbers of cards that I have on offer um, whenever I offer a card buffet. But I had eight this time and the ladies could choose four of those to make in the class. And then if they wanted to purchase any additional kits, they could purchase additional kits to take home. Well, one of the ladies um, got five cards actually made in the class because she purchased an additional kit. Um, and the other two ladies, they um, purchased additional kits to take home with them. And um, this one, I think they all, I think they might have all done this one. This was one of the eight cards, but I thought we will create this one today because it's really, really cute. It's a very simple layout based on um, a card sketch layout. So this card sketch, you can change up for any products that you have at home. So if you wanna make this along with me, um, you can do something similar to this. And even if you don't have this little punch, you can make little, um, you might even put a full sentiment strip there or you might just make little um, rectangles if you have alphabet stamps. Um, 
But yeah, feel free to craft along with me if you want to pull out some DSP, an embossing folder, a couple of coordinating colours of cardstock and some white. And if you've got a little, um, something little that you can put here, like we've used dragonflies, but you might like to put flowers or depend, like I just used a punch. So depending what punch or dies you've got, you might like to add something there. So if you'd like to craft along, feel free to grab... Um, feel free to um, grab some products out and I'll tell you, I'll show you what we're going to be creating, uh, sorry, what we are creating with. And these are some of the retiring products that are on special. All right, so first of all, we've got the Alpha Best, um, wait, where's my little, where's my list just gone? Oh, here it is. I've got my list here of um, what the retiring products are. So the Alpha Best, um, stamp set uh this one is retiring but this one um is not currently discounted but it is retiring so it's only going to be available until the 30th of april and this is a great alphabet and number stamp and you've got a couple of extra little um details here and then you've got these little um uh like labels or um tags that you can create as well and they coordinate with the punch which is the best label punch and the best label punch is discounted by 50 percent at the moment it coordinates with this stamp set or you can use it on its own and it creates these little labels with the little scalloped corners um, this one was 30 dollars, and it's now only 15 dollars. and this is a nice little punch um, as I said, you don't have to use it with the alphabets. You can just use it, um, you know, with the detailed images in there as well. Okay, so there, that's two of the products we're using. We're using, really sad about this one going. This is the Stripes and Splatters 3D embossing folder. And we've had a lot of use out of this one. It's actually been one of our go-to um, embossing folder combos. There's two embossing folders in there. And this one is leaving us as well. Um, it's currently not discon uh, not discounted, but it is leaving on the 30th of April. So if you want this one, then grab it. And there's two, as I said, there's two embossing folders in there. Um, today we're using the stripes. Okay. But yeah, we've had so much use out of this one. It's been a great one. Um, we're also going to be using the dragonfly punch, which is discounted by 30% off. You've got the large dragonfly and the small dragonfly. They are a bit hard to see on camera with the lights reflecting. So I'm trying to get them reflecting well that you can see the detailed images on them. But anyway, this is the little dragonfly. And then we've got the big dragonfly as well. Um, this one is now currently um, $19.50 for that. So that's a really great price if you want to grab that one. Um, and we've got the, um, so this is the 2022 to 2024 in color Baker's Twine. These are the in colors that are going to be um, leaving us. We've got Starry Sky, Lemon Lime Twist, no, Parakeet Party. Sorry, I'm making sure I'm getting the colors right. Um, Sweet Sorbet, Tahitian Tide, and... What's the other one? Awkward Oasis. Yeah, so they're the ones that are leaving us. So this packet is currently 50% off as well, and it's only $13.50, and you get the five spools in there. So um, they're going, and the DSP. Now, I'll move everything else to show you the DSP because the DSP is, um, you know, it's a large pack, so... I'll quickly show you. So this DSP is also reduced by 50%. Now this one was a mega pack. This one was um, 48 sheets, or it is 48 sheets. It's still available at the moment. 48 sheets in this pack, and you've got a range of different patterns. So they're not ones that necessarily coordinate together, um, but they coordinate with a lot of the other Stampin' Up! products. And, of course, they're all the colours. So now you can see I've used this one a lot. Um, so I've got lots of chopped up bits. So I'll show you all the bits and pieces so you can see the different papers. Oh, that's the same as that one. 
Um, this one is currently reduced to $26.50, which is a great price for um, 48 sheets of designer series paper. But there's lots of fun designs in here. Oh, there's my scraps. Um, this is the one we're going to be using today, actually, the tulips. And on the back, we've got some spots. We've got some um, like ledger paper, which I always love a good ledger paper. They make great... Um, make great oh that's the back of that other one they make great um distressed and vintage projects so we've got some hearts we've got oh that's the back of that one there's some more of that ledger paper so you can see i've chopped down some of these because i've been using them but lots and lots of fun i love this one too this was one of the other ones that we had made up in the kits for the weekend and then you've got some black and whites. I love this one too. This was one of my favourite ones in this pack. And then you've got black and white design as well, which a bit of black and white is always good. Look at these swans. They're so beautiful. And then that one as well. So there you go. So that's a little bit of an overview of what's in the pack. Obviously, I've, they come in 12 by 12, and I've chopped mine up, as you can see, because I've used a fair bit of mine. But I've still got a fair bit there to use, so... Um, yeah, so there we go. Okay, so that one is also on special. 50% off. Okay, so let's get to making our project. Now, in fact, I have got two of the kits left over. I've got one with the tulips and I've got one with that other paper as well. Um, so let's, because this one is made with the tulips, how about we make this one this, this time? And it's changing up some of the colours as well. So let's do that. And I'll save that other kit. Somebody might get that as a gift. Or somebody might like to purchase it too. Who knows? Hey, Deborah, how are you? Fantastic to see you. Um, Megan says about 20 sausages stacked tall. Oh, about 20, 25 sausages stacked tall. Is that... Is that what you, you mean? The size of the dog that you got bitten by? 25 sausage dogs stacked tall or 25 sausages stacked tall? I'm not quite sure what you mean there. <laughs> that's, that's a little bit cryptic. Um, oh, you're going to keep your alphabet stamp set? Yeah, it's a really great one, isn't it? Okay, now I'm just going to pop my embellishments back in here for the moment so that I don't lose them. Okay, and here's all of our components. Alrighty, so I've got my DSP, I've got my card base, and then I've got all these little pieces. This one's already been um, this one's already been embossed, so I don't need to do that. That'll save a little bit of time. But we might start with a few of our um, layers. Well, you know what? Let's start with our. Let's actually start with our um, stamping first. I always usually start with my stamping and this one is for punching the butterflies. Oh, we need a wink of Stella for this one too. Um, oh, okay. Yes, it was huge. It came up to your hips. Oh my goodness. That would have been so scary. Oh, no good, Megan. No good. Oh, hopefully you're healing well. All right, so I'm going to use the um, Hello Sentiment, or Hello Letter. The, well, let's just say the letters to make the word Hello. So let's see if I can find them now on here. Um, there's the H, E, L, and O. Oh, good, they're all up near the top, probably because we use them on the weekend. <laughs> Alrighty, so we'll grab out a few blocks. Um, we can probably use some of my little blocks. These little tiny A blocks, they have retired. Um, but then we've got the B blocks, which are the next size up. So, And then we've got other larger ones as well. So any of those will be fine. I mean, you can use whatever size block you want, really. But for little stamps, I like using the little blocks. 
but yeah, they have they have already sold out. Oh, I didn't put that one on there straight. They have already sold out these ones, so they won't be returning. But these ones are still available. L and my O. And then I need another block for my little frame. And I've got a C block, so I'll use a C block for that one. There we go. Okay, we are going to be stamping in Misty Moonlight today. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp my little frames first. Um, and let me just check with my punch which way they're going to go. Okay, so we can go that way or that. Oh, actually, it's probably better to go that way. So I always like, whenever I'm going to be punching, especially if I've got to stamp first and then punch, I like to see which way my cardstock is going to feed in to make sure that I stamp in that orientation. So I'm going to stamp going down, down ways, down ways. That's a very good grammar, Mandy. Um, horizontal, no, vertical, vertical. That's it, vertical. So I'm going to stamp my little frames first. Leave a little bit of a gap. Oh, I'm getting a little bit of ink on the inside of my frame. Oh, there we go. It didn't transfer. That's good. Okay. So we've got those. I'm going to give that one a little stamp off on some scrap paper and then a clean straight away. Just because the, um, the blues are quite deep in pigment. And it will just help to eliminate excess staining on my block. I mean, on my stamp. Okay, and then we'll do our letters. So let's go in order. We'll do our H and line that up as best as I can. I might have, might get my head in shot here. Oh, that's not too bad. And then my E. Oh, let's get a bit more ink on that E. That's better. Awesome. Two L's. Can tell when I'm concentrating because I stop talking. <laughs> I go quiet. There we go. And our O. And I think hello is a good sentiment because you can use it for um like anything. You can use it for any occasion. There we go. All right, good. That's all the stamping that there is on this card. Isn't that cool? So quick and easy. All right. Um, all right, let's give those stamps a clean. I'll set that aside just to let that ink dry for a moment before we punch. I always like to stamp off the excess ink on my um, stamps first before I put clean them on my chamois. That way it's taking less ink to the chamois then. Keeps it a little bit cleaner for a little bit longer. This is a relatively new chamois. This is what they look like when they come. They're, well, this one's still got a bit of ink stain on it, but that's come through from the other side. But yeah, they look nice when they um, when you first get them, but they do stain up pretty quickly but they still clean even though they stain up if you rinse it out I rinse mine probably about once every week um, if you rinse them out then even if they're stained they will still clean your stamps beautifully okay so let's punch these out now so we'll line them up with our punch I really should have my glasses on too I might grab them and punch I just put my glasses on here. That's better. Now I can see. It's getting my eyes are getting worse. I'm finding I need to wear them more often now for um for reading and for looking at anything that's a little bit finer or detailed. I guess it comes with the age, doesn't it? <laughs> you can get to a certain age and you just yeah. Our eyes don't work quite as well as they used to when we were a bit younger. And this one I'm going to just flip around so that I can hang on to the cardstock in my right hand to position that. 
there we go. Did you know that all of our punches have, if you're new to Stampin' Up, you may not know this. So our punches are good, strong punches. Um, when they're open, they look like that. But to store them, you can store them flat like that. So they have a little locking mechanism on the back, which you squeeze it closed, and then you slide that mechanism up, and it locks it in place. If you find you go to punch with this and it's not punching, like if it's jamming, you might have your button in the locked position. Okay, sometimes, especially with the bigger ones, not so much with this one, but with the bigger ones, um, they won't close all the way if the button's in the wrong position. So if you're having trouble um, squeezing that, getting it all the way closed when you're trying to punch with it, just check your button. It might be in the wrong position. Then just open it up and then try. Okay, there we go. All right, so there's our letters. And uh, we're going to punch our little dragonflies while we are in the punching mode. So this is one of our big punches. And you can see the button is a lot bigger. So if I, if I have that button in the wrong position, I can't punch. My punch won't close all the way to punch the cardstock. Okay, so just make sure you've got it in the open position. The open position is closest to the Stampin' Up! logo. Okay, so there's a little tip for you. All right, we're going to punch two little dragonflies from our basic white cardstock. There's one. And hang on a sec. Go to the other side there. That's two. Out they pop. There we go. And we'll close our punch. So we'll squeeze it closed. I'm holding it with that hand as I slide the button. And now it's locked down nice and flat to store it. Okay, all right, so we've got our dragonflies and our letters, and now we just need to put everything together. All right, so we've just got a standard card base here. It's just half an A4, uh, half of an A4 sheet. We work in uh, metric here in Australia, so I give metric measurements. Um, in America, they have a different size cardstock. And so um, their card bases are a different size, so their layers are going to be different sizes. So this one is just a standard, um, a standard layer. So I think it's uh, is it 14. Oh, I better not say it off the top of my head or I'll get it wrong. Just your standard layer with a, a um, two millimeter border. Okay, I'll just line that up with our DSP. Nice and easy. Um, now the good thing is too with sketches, you can change the size of the layers to get the same sort of look, but to fit your cardstock or, um, you know, you can even change them up a little bit too and it doesn't really matter. So this is our next layer. This is um, Misty Moonlight, the same as the card base. And we are, we've already embossed that with the stripes embossing folder, which I showed you before. So lots of glue on these ones that are embossed because they've got that um, those embossed and debossed sections. And then we're just going to pop this one over this side and we're popping it up towards the top. So it's not going to be centered and it's not going to have even borders all the way around. Okay. There we go. So that's the start of your... Um, your card sketch or your layout all right so as i said it doesn't matter exactly what size pieces you use just so long as it kind of looks like that you might want to have this bit a little bit wider or a little bit longer or whatever like it doesn't matter all right and then we're going to work out where we're going to have these two um pieces so i'm going to have this one down about that far and over to the side. So I'm going to be lining it up with the DSP. And then this one is going to be tucked in under. And it's going to come out on the right hand edge like that. Okay, so it's going to go about there. So if I leave that one in place, I'm going to adhere this one first. So we're just going to put a bit of glue on this one. This one is um, Fresh Freesia, I believe. 
But again, you can change up your colours to whatever you have in your stash. Um, so that's going to go about there. We're just going to tuck that under there like so. We're going to line that up again along the edge there. And just make sure that we're getting that nice and straight. Like there. That looks about straight, I think. Okay, stick that one down. Now this piece is going to go up on dimensionals, but before we adhere it, we're going to wrap some twine around it first, okay? So that's the start of our, our layout. Again, I'm not giving measurements today because these pieces don't need to be exact measurements, okay? We took, we're using a layer, a sketch layout today. So it can be any measurement that you choose. You can change it up. And that works out really well being able to just um, alter the measurements to your card base. So if you're watching in another country and your card base is not A4, then, um, yeah, you can just change up the layers to suit your card base. Okay, so then we're just going to tie a bow at the left-hand side. Just shimmy that across a little bit. Just neaten up our bow. I like a nice neat bow. So just get that to sit. We might need to trim it up a little bit. I've got a hanging down bow today. <laughs> Have you ever noticed that your bows sit differently depending on the day and depending on which way you tie them? Now I'm just finding my paper snips here so I can just take the cap off so I can trim this up because I didn't tie it evenly. So, And then with my twine, when I'm using baker's twine um, or linen thread, I like to separate the fibres on the ends. Um, that's just a personal preference because I like them to be a little bit more um, textured rather than having a blunt end. That's just me. That's just how I like to have them. Let me take a little sip of my tea here. Hmm, that's a beautiful temperature now. I'll close that now to keep it warm as it's starting to um, cool down a bit. All right, so now we're going to pop some Stampin' Dimensionals on the back here. I'm using up some that I have left over from some of the um, Kits Collection kits today because I get all of these dimensionals left over from kits and um, I never end up using them. So I thought, well, I might use them today. And in fact, I might use these little mini ones because I want to get some along this edge and it's quite a small edge. So I'll grab my take your pick tool, my new take your pick tool, because I broke the other one. So this is my new one. And we're going to put some along, um, actually I might just put them in a little bit from the edge there, come to think of it. I'll just lift that one up, get that one back off with my nail, um, just because we're going to have a little bit of overhang. Um, oops. So you'll notice that um, some of your dimensionals that come in the kits collection kits, they're a little bit of a different dimension to our standard dimensionals. So just be aware of that when you're mixing and matching um, dimensionals because um, these ones I'm using today, they're quite a bit higher than our standard um, minis that we purchase. So um, yeah, just be aware of that if you're, if you're combining packs of dimensionals. Make sure you've got all the same height that you're using, otherwise your piece will be wonky. Okay, because those ones are from my kit, I haven't actually put my little marks on the back of them to see the um, if I've removed the papers or not. Because I do do that with my Sharpie sometimes too. I mark the back of the, the paper so that I can see when I've removed the paper or not. Otherwise, I'm kind of looking in the light and touching them to see if they're sticky to make sure I've removed the um, backing paper. All right. And you will probably know what I'm talking about because you will probably do the same thing. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to um, 
pop this layer down here, just overlapping the, the fresh freesia piece. And this one that I'm using here is um, crushed curry. There we go, crushed curry. And then all of our little alphabet letters, they are going to be popped up on dimensionals as well. So I'll put them, let me make sure I get my L up the right way. L, E, and my O. And I'll use my large dimensionals this time. These ones are also from a kit. And we'll just pop one in the center of each one of these. And these are nice high dimensionals, these ones too, from this kit. I don't know which kit they were from because I've got so many leftover packs of dimensionals from kits. So it could be from any, but these ones are nice and high. All right, so I'm just going to turn these over. Hey, Julie, how are you? Great to have you with us today. So what did everybody else get up to on the weekend? So I mentioned that I had my card buffet on um, Saturday and um, we had, I didn't talk much about it actually, I just mentioned that I had that on Saturday, but we had a lovely afternoon. Um, the ladies and I had a really fun time of chatting, and catching up and um, we had some afternoon tea together because, you know, I always serve afternoon tea because you can't have a craftoon without afternoon tea. So, um, yeah, it was just a really lo lovely afternoon of crafting. Um, and, yeah, that was kind of the highlight of my weekend, really. Um, yesterday was a quiet day, church in the morning and then a nap in the afternoon and um, spent time with my catalogue last night, as I mentioned earlier, um, labelling all my catalogue and putting my, my tabs in my catalogue so that I can find things. I know where to find them. See how I'm lining? I'm doing the two end ones first and then I'm going to do the centre one and then I can line up the other two. I mean, I don't know if that's the best way, but whatever way works for you to get them lined up. And look, if they're not completely lined up straight, it doesn't matter because it's a handmade card, right? And we all know that handmade cards don't have to be perfect. Hey, Glenda, how are you? Lovely to have you with us today. So there we go. And we'll pop our E on there as well. So this was one of the cards that the ladies made on the weekend at Card Buffet. Oh, that one's a little bit wonky badonkus. Let's see if I can straighten him up a bit. Oh, it is what it is. Oh, it's not too bad. It'll be okay. All right. Um, there we go. And then we've got our two cute little dragonflies. Now, I should have wink of cellar them beforehand, but you know what? I'm going to stick them on first and then hit them with the wink of cellar. So I've just used basic white cardstock. I'm just going to put a little bit of glue in the middle on his, under his little belly. I'll put that one over here. And this one too. You could mount these up if you wanted to, but I'm just having mine flat because we've got the dimension on these two layers here. I'll just pop this one over here like that. There we go. And then we're going to um, put a little bit of Wink of Stella. So always with your Wink of Stella, give it a shake. That helps. You can hear the little ball in there. It's got a little, um, what do you call it? A um, ball bearing in there, which helps to um, mix up the glitter with the alcohol solution. And then we're just very carefully going to colour our little dragonflies with our Wink of Stella to give them a little sparkle. Because, you know, dragonflies are sparkly. So, super, super cute card. Very simple, quick and easy, using a very easy to um, easy to change up card sketch with whatever you have at home on your shelf. There you go. Now the camera is looking a little bit um, a little bit 
fuzzy to me. But is that just me or is that my internet? It could be my internet because the internet was being a little bit pedantic earlier today. Um, oh, wait, I forgot my bling. Wait, we're not finished yet. Where's my bling? There we go. Forgot the bling. Um, yeah, so hopefully it's clear enough that you can see what I'm doing. Silly internet. All right, so we can't have a card without bling, can we? Goodness me, what was I thinking? So we've got one up there. We're going to pop two down here. One and... Oh. Oh, oh, there we go, two. And I'm just using our basic rhinestones. Basic rhinestones, of course, are carrying over into the new catalogue because can't have a catalogue without our basic rhinestones, can we? Sorry, they're called, in the catalogue, they're called rhinestone basic jewels. There we go, now we're finished. Okay, so there we go. Can you see the glitter on the... Not sure if the lights are going to pick that up or if it's going to be too fuzzy to be able to see. The internet just doesn't seem to be too happy today. So there you go. So you've got the um, the card there in the two different DSPs, and they are both from that same pack, um, which is the, I'm just getting it. Here's the, um, the pack. It's the Delightfully Eclectic 12 by 12 Designer Series paper. It's currently 50% off. And if you're looking for it, the code is 161640. 161640. Okay, and both of those DSPs come in the pack. So isn't that cool? So two um, different looking cards, same layout, just swapping up the colours on this layer and this this layer basically. And oh and the dragonflies. So there we go. Okay, now if you're worried about your um, your trim here. You can pop a little bit of glue dot underneath there. You probably won't need a whole glue dot because the new glue dots are pretty big. So I just break off a little bit of the glue dot um, and pop it under the twine. Actually, let's do that now because otherwise I will forget. I've already got a little bit already sitting here that I've broken off one of the other glue dots. So I just take my take a pick tool and I pull a bit off or you can use your nails and just pull a bit of that glue off the glue dot and just slip that underneath. Whoops. Slip that underneath your bow to just hold your bow in place and that'll also stop your bow from coming undone. Okay? Keeps it in place, stops it coming undone. There we go. Great. All right, that's card number one. Done. All right. Card number two. Hang on a sec. Let me just switch over my, my products here. Make some room. Okay. Oh, thanks, Angela. Thanks, Glenda. Oh, it's looking fine, Glenda. Oh, good. It could just be this end. I did was having some internet trouble earlier, so um, it might just be playing back on my iPad. On my iPad it's looking a little bit fuzzy but on my computer I'm looking over on my computer and it looks okay so it could just be I don't know whatever <laughs> something. <laughs> All right so the second card I've got for you today um, and we'll we'll whiz through this one I think because it's uh, again another basic design based on a layout Again, using some retiring products, but this one's also using some products that are carrying over. So this is my um, my Sending Hugs card. Isn't it just so sweet? So easy to put together. Again, just using a basic um, card sketch. So we're going to be using the Layering Leaves stamp set, which is carrying over, and the Coordinating... Um, bow punch which is also carrying over into the new catalog okay um, this one was designed by Rachel Tessman this stamp set if any of you know Rachel Tessman from the US um, she is a beautiful beautiful person and um, she's very very creative and she does great things with the paper pumpkin kits too 
um, lots of great alternatives and things like that. So if you ever want to see alternatives to kits, um, yeah, check out Rachel Tessman in the US. Um, but she designed this stamp set and we have a coordinating punch. So I love this one. We get a lot of use out of this. And the sentiments in this one are fantastic. So if you're looking for a great sentiment um, stamp set, there's sentiments for lots of different occasions in this one. Okay, so um, that's the first one. We are also using the, um, the Heartfelt Hexagon um, punch, which is also carrying over into the new catalogue. A bit hard to see the... You'll see it when we punch it anyway, but a bit hard to see it in the, the light there. Um, but the DSP, oh, did I get the DSP out? Oh, I didn't get the DSP out of this one, for this one. The DSP for this one is the Inked Botanicals and it's 50% off, but hang on, let me grab it. It's actually in the box under my desk because... I've pulled all of the, um, well, actually Amber did. Amber pulled all of the papers off my paper shelf that are um, retiring. And we've got them in a box um, under my desk. So this is the um, beautiful Inked Botanicals DSP. This one is so pretty. And this one is retiring next week on the 30th. And it is... Um, yeah, it's it's a really pretty paper, but it's 50% off at the moment. So it's six by six. You get um, 48 sheets in the pack. So I'll just do... Now, this isn't a complete pack, obviously, because you can see I've chopped, been chopping it up because I've used this one a lot. Um, but I'll just do a quick flick through so you can kind of get the feel for this paper. Just really beautiful patterns and colours in this paper. And it's currently only, oh my goodness, it's only $10.87 for this paper pack at the moment. So that is a bargain if you want if you want a big pack of papers, which are beautiful. Um, yeah, so there you go. There's some other, other designs as well, but I've chopped them up, I think. So, but the colours are... Calypso Coral, Crushed Curry, Lost Lagoon, Petal Pink, and Pool Party. So there you go. So that's um, discounted. And we're also going to be using some of the um, brushed metallic um, brushed metallic adhesive back dots, and they're currently 50% off as well. I don't have the pack of those out to show you. Um, I also use two on this one, um, vellum, plain vellum. Now, all the, the vellum, the A4 vellum, has already sold out, so it's already gone. However, I did pull out the, the vellum basics, 12 by 12, because it is still available at the moment, but it's going to be retiring soon as well. And this is the patterned one, so I thought we might try and use some of this one today. So you've got stripes. You've got leaves and you've got spots. Not sure if you can see the leaves there. And then you've got the spots. But the spots the spots will probably go well today. So maybe we can use some of the spots today. I have already, um, I do already have a circle in there that's already been punched ready. But I thought, well, maybe we'll try the circle. So anyway, so that's what we're doing with um, with this one. So let's grab out our inks. We're using Calypso Coral and Pretty Peacock today. Really easy, just two colours. Again, you can change up this design to whatever you have in your craft stash. All right. Has anybody got this designer series paper? Have you used this one? really pretty all right so we're going to do our oh there's my bling let's not lose that I'll just pop that up here actually you know what I'm gonna stick it right there so if I forget you can all remind me okay to add my bling at the end so remind me I'll put it there so that you see it so you remember and hopefully I'll remember too <laughs> all right let's start with our stamping put all these other bits to the side 
we've got um, some large leaves, small leaves, and then our sentiment. So we'll get some blocks out for those. I'm going to put my glasses back on so I can see what I'm doing. Um, okay, so in the large leaf, you've got um, two different types of leaves. Then if you want to colour them in, you can either colour them in by hand, you can leave them just as an outline, or you can use the solid shapes to colour to um, do two-step stamping, to stamp in the colour inside of them. So... Um, uh, this you would use this one. This one here is a solid leaf image. Um, that's actually the one we're going to be using today. But you could use these ones if you wanted to. And then this one is also um, you can do that one as a two-step stamp as well, or you can use them individually. Also, you've got a little splatter in there too, and you've got a um, single leaf there as well. Okay, so we're going to use that solid one this time. So this one here. Oh, actually, hang on, I need the little one, and I also need, so I've got that one. Wait, let's get some blocks. I've got to reach across my desk for my blocks, so excuse me reaching across there. Okay, so that one, and then we've got the little one, that one there. So we'll grab a smaller block for that one, and then our sentiment is sending hugs. I love that sentiment. That's a great sentiment for lots of different occasions. Sending hugs. And you'll notice that I'm putting, before I mount my stamp, I'm putting it down onto a piece of cardstock. Um, doesn't matter so much with this one because it's more of a solid shape. But these ones that um, have a long, narrow piece, they're quite pliable and bendy. And if you want to make sure that they're going to fit in the punch, there's a couple of things I'll show you with that, actually. I'll show you two different techniques with that. So I'm just letting it relax on some cardstock first, but not onto a sticky surface. So it would stick to this surface, so it doesn't allow it to relax into its natural um, shape. So, But on cardstock, see how it moves around on the cardstock? It allows it to relax into its natural shape. And then that way, it's better... Um, to get it in its natural shape for stamping so that it's not skewed um, into weird and wonderful angles or anything. So what I've got in my stamp case that coordinates um, with the punch, I've got a little template here that I created. Um, this is how your punch will punch, okay? So it'll punch both of those together. So what you can actually do is if I put that down onto another piece of paper or cardstock, I can take my, my stamp, I can lay it down into that, oops, sorry, wrong way, hang on a minute, this way, yes, where I've got the words. I can lay it down into that little template, make sure that it's sitting down into that template, okay, then I can take my block to it. Now, if I, if I, if I want to stamp two at once, to punch both of them at once, I know that they're going to punch out exactly like that because that's how I've got the, the template, okay? Then I can mount them both up on the same block and I can stamp them both at the same time. Now, if you want to double check, flip that back over, line it back up with the stamps, make sure that they are all fitting in there exactly. Oops, hang on a minute. And this one actually isn't. So this one is a little bit um, skewed. So we'll, there we go, line that back up with the stamp. And that is exactly how it's going to punch. All right, I'm making sure that my stem is, my stems are in the right spot there for punching and stamping. If you're worried about that, just do them individually. But you can do them both at the same time. So let's, let's give that a go and see if, um, Oh, well, actually, you know what? I can't because, well, I could if I had a whole strip of cardstock, like if I had a whole piece of cardstock, but I've already got my strips um, cut. But that would work if you were just stamping out of one big piece of cardstock because that is exactly how they're going to punch. See how they're side by side like that? Which is exactly how I've got them lined up. Okay, does that make sense? So that 
is that, is that. Okay. But now that I've just said all of that, I'm doing mine individually because I've got my strips already um, prepped in my kit. So let's just put them back. <laughs> let's just put them back on individual blocks now that I just explained all of that. But anyway, at least you learnt a tip today. So I'm just going to remount this one on this block because I want to put it in the centre. There we go. Okay. Did you all know that those tips? Or is that something new? Did you know about uh, lining those up that way? All right, so we need two of the large leaves and two of the small um, flowers. And I'm stamping using Pretty Peacock onto, um, well, let's just make sure I've got space there. Pretty Peacock onto, um, oh, what's it called? Lost Lagoon. I went blank then for a minute. And we'll do two of the little flowers. Oops, inked up the side of my block then. There we go. Okay, I'll stamp these off. And I'm just going to wipe the edge of that block with my paper as well, just to take that off a little bit. And then we'll give them a clean. Okay. Has anybody already got this um, layering leaves stamp set and the bow punch? Have you tried these ones before? Oops, I didn't clean that block completely. I've just caught that in the corner of my eye and my peripheral. So I'll put that down on the desk. That ink there. All right, while we are talking about um, leaves and flowers and things, does anybody here have a favourite um, flower? Do you have a favourite flower? Let me know in the comments if you have a favourite flower. All right, now we're going to stamp our sentiment as well. We're doing we're stamping that one in Calypso Coral. Just going to stamp that straight in the middle because we're going to be punching that with um, a fairly large punch. There we go. We'll let that one dry for a moment before we punch the shape um, while we punch the, um, the leaves and the flowers. Oh, dahlias. You like dahlias or dahlias, depending on your pronunciation, Megan. Some say dahlias, some say dahlias. Beautiful. Who? Uh, what about everybody else? What What are your favourite flowers? I love um, carnations. Well, actually, I love a lot of different flowers, but I really love carnations. Um, they're, they're a flower that really reminds me a lot of my childhood as well. Just having another sip of my tea. Um, yeah, my dad loved them. My dad loved carnations, I believe, and um, um, I just seem to remember we often had carnations in the ho house when I was growing up. So I'm not sure if that's because dad used to buy them for mum or mum was always doing floral arranging as well. Um, she used to always do, she was very good at floral arranging and she always did the flowers at church when I was growing up and um and stuff like that and she's always doing flower arrangements for different events and things like that and she's really good at it um i think she was self-taught i don't think i don't know that she ever did any floristry training i don't think so um it was just something she was really good at and i just always remember carnations being around and the smell of them i love the smell of carnations they're so beautiful 
but then I love a lot of native flowers as well. Um, don't think we've had, I don't think we have had a carnation stamp set, Megan says. Oh, I actually think we had one. I don't know if it was actually a carnation, but it looked very similar to a carnation um, a couple of years ago. I'm pretty sure they were carnations. They looked like carnations. Um, I remember I made a card. I remember a card specifically. I probably made more than one card, but I remember a card specifically with that stamp set. And I had three of them in a row along the bottom of the card. Um, oh, what was the name of that stamp set? Amber might remember. Do you remember that? Do you remember that stamp set, Amber? I think we used, um, oh, I'm trying to think what we might have, I think we made, made it for one of the classes. Oh goodness. I'll have to look back now, Megan, and see. Yeah, it'd be nice if they brought out another one though. That'd be lovely. Um, Julie says, I have the layering leaves and bow punch. Oh, fantastic. You recently used it on a wedding card you made and you'll post it in our group. Oh, fantastic. Um, for, for me and the ladies in our group to see. Fantastic. Oh, that'd be great, Julie. I'd love to see it. And you love peonies. Yes, they're really beautiful flowers too, aren't they? They are. All right, so we've got our flowers and leaves punched and now we'll punch our... Um, Heartfelt hexagon. This is our heartfelt hexagon punch. We're going to punch our um, sentiment. So I'll just make sure I line that up in the middle. Let's see if I can get that reasonably straight ish. Well, that's a bit better. There we go. Oh, and that's right, I was going to try the spot vellum as well, wasn't I? Um, what size circle shape did I use? Oh, I don't know if I've got my circle punch in here, actually. Oh, I might have. Um, do, 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 do. Um, oh, I can't remember what size this was. Oh, this was a die. That's right, this was a die, this one. Let me see what size it coordinates with. Let's see if it's, um, no, it's bigger than that one. I've got some of my circles in little templates. Oh, I haven't got that one though. This one's actually a die, not a punch. So that's not that size. Is it two inches? No, it's bigger than that. Two and three eighths of an inch. It's probably not any of these because it's a die. It's probably a completely different size. No, it's actually bigger. Well, all right. So I will use the one that I've already got. Um, this is a stitched circle, um, probably from the Stylish Shape Dies, I think. Was it Stylish Shape Dies? Let me check on my list. Um, yes, Stylish Shape Dies. I don't have them out at the moment, but let me just say, I've already got mine done. You could use the Basics Vellum with the spots. I think that would go, that would go really well as well. Okay, so, but I'll have to use this one because that's... I don't have my dies out and I don't have my die cutting machine. So we'll just use what we've got here. Okay, so that's those pieces ready to go. Now we're going to do a little bit of tearing techniques on this one. Um, let's see, is this paper directional? Not really. Not really. But anyway, I'm going to have it this way up, I think. Which way looks better? I don't think it matters because it's not really directional paper. Um, but anyway, we're going to do some tearing techniques. So this was just an ordinary, um, just a, a piece of cardstock that is um, the same width as the card base, okay, which is in metric is 10 and a half centimetres. And then it's a little bit shorter lengthways. And we are going um, portrait, uh, not portrait, sorry, landscape this time. So we've got about a centimetre on either side, Okay. Um, but I'm going to make more of an even border, but it probably won't even be an even border. But it doesn't matter because it's a sketch. It's a sketch layout, so it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be the same. So I'm doing little tears. I'm going to do the bottom as well. I'm doing little tears towards myself. 
controlling the cardstock, um, holding the cardstock to support it with my other hand, but controlling the tear with my dominant hand. I'm right-handed. So you don't want to tear a lot at one time because then you'll get a big, ugly white edge. We just want that little edge like that. Okay. Hey, Jenny, how are you? Oh, you got your catalog too. Fantastic. Thank you for letting me know. Oh, that's so good. All right, now this piece, we're going to just tear along the bottom edge. So I'm going to turn it around this way. So I'm tearing with my dominant hand and tearing towards myself to create that white torn edge. And again, just little tears at a time to control that tear. There we go. All right, now this piece, um, we are just going to angle the end with just doing a little snip with our scissors. Again, doesn't matter, doesn't matter on the angle, doesn't matter how sharp or blunt it is, just angle it, okay? And now we can just put everything together. And these little strips that you tore off, you can actually use them on other projects or you can use them to decorate the inside of your card as well, okay? So when I use torn pieces, I like to have that white edge showing. You might like to add a little bit of ink with a sponge dauber along the edge there, um, or you can just leave it raw like that, depending on you know what you like. Okay, so let's adhere all of these pieces. Oh, I'm glad your catalogue turned up, Jenny. That's exciting. So many new. You'll find it really, really, a really different layout. Um, but I love how it's set out. And I always say to everyone to make sure that they read the introduction blurb inside the front cover as well from um, Sarah Douglas, because it's, um, or oh, sometimes they're written by Sarah and sometimes they're written by Shelley. I think the one this time is written, actually, who is it written by this time? I think it was Sarah this time. Let's have a look. Oh, it's by both, Sarah and Shelley. Um, yeah, it's always a great little introduction and it helps to, um, this one in particularly in this catalogue, helps to explain the catalogue and the new layout. So, yeah, so everybody make sure that you read it. Um, I had to put my glasses on to read it because it is on a light, it's white writing on a light colour and it was a little bit hard for me to read it without my glasses. So put your glasses on it, ladies, and <laughs> if you need them. And... Um, yeah, just make sure you, you do read that. All right, this piece here, this Calypso Coral piece, we're taking that right to the edge of the cardstock. Okay, make sure that I didn't check that my opening was the right way, but it is, thankfully. Then we've got our strip here of uh, crushed curry. I'll just add a little bit of glue along there. We're going to add this piece towards the top of the crushed curry piece, just leaving a little border there along that top edge, like so, okay? And then these pieces, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, adhere my leaves to the back of this layer, uh, the sentiment label first. And then I'm going to attach that to my vellum and then I'm going to attach the whole thing to the, um, the card front. Okay. This one actually doesn't have any ribbon on it, believe it or not. So a little bit of glue on there. Tuck that in behind there. You can use glue dots if you, if you prefer glue dots. Um, they will work for this as well. I like my liquid glue, so I'll just pop that up that way. I'm just putting glue on the stems so that I've got um, enough adhesive on there to, oh, there we go, to glue them in place, but I've still got enough wiggle room to be able to um, move them around. Okay, so we're going to overlap them a little bit like that. There we go. We'll do the opposite corner or diagonal, not corner. It's not really the corner, is it? It's the diagonal opposite. So we're going to go here like this. 
and it doesn't matter they don't have to be exactly the same they can you can like I'm following I've got a template to follow so if yours looks a little bit different to mine it doesn't matter there we go and this one here but it's nice to just use some of these beautiful um, products that are going because um, we've had some really beautiful products in the last catalogue and there are some beautiful new products coming in as well, which I'm very excited about. But it's nice to just get, an, you know, last, last play with some of these outgoing products. Well, these ones in particular are staying, but the DSP is going. There we go. Okay, so we've got that on there and then we're going to adhere that to our vellum. Now, I don't often use liquid glue on my vellum because sometimes it can make it a little bit curly, but I am going to today because I'm just trying to get this done quickly. All right, then onto my vellum circle. Okay. Press that down. And then that's going to be popped up on dimensionals. So we'll grab, grab our dimensionals again. I've got sticky glue on my fingers now. Okay, press, press, press. Now we're going to put dimensionals behind that sentiment label so that they don't show through the vellum. And just whack a few of those down. There we go, that's probably enough. Four, I think, should be enough. Remove our backings. Oops, I better put it up the right way. That would be helpful, wouldn't it? And then we're going to adhere this over towards the, um, the left hand, no, the right hand side. <laughs> Get your left and your right correct. Right, Mandy. But I've got to watch this piece here that it doesn't go off the edge of the card. Okay, so just be mindful of where your um, where your um, foliage is. There we go. Foliage, that's the word I was looking for. Okay, now our bling. I remembered. <laughs> I didn't need you to remind me this time. I remembered. We're going to pop our bling. Oops, that slipped. Hang on. Try that again. Top and bottom of our sentiment label. There we go. And I could have used any of the other DSP in that DSP pack too and changed them up to make them look different, but same, same, but different. You know what I mean? Um, like I did with the previous card. So there you go. Cute, isn't it? So there's our two cards that we made today. Nice and quick and easy using those um, card layouts or those sketch layouts. And remember that you can use the products that you have in your stash. Change up your designer series paper. Change up your sentiment if you want to. If you don't have these little this little punch, you can just do a strip sentiment along there on a um, just a strip. Or you might even have like a nice label punch or something you want to add there. Um, but yeah, just change it up to what you've got at home. Um, but I hope you enjoyed those and I hope that they gave you a few ideas as well. Um, for anybody who might be shopping with me, um, I will let you know that um, my April host code is this one here. So if you use that and your order is over $75, you will receive a thank you gift from me. Um, but every order does receive a thank you card from me as well. So um, yeah, so just be mindful of that one. You can find my shop um, either through my blog, mandyspapercraftcreations.blogspot.com or on my website, mandywithabee.stampinup.net. Um, so if you need those, they are there for you as well. Alrighty, so let me flip the camera up. While I'm doing that, let me know if you have any questions about anything that I shared today or any products that I showed you today. Um... Any comments about any of those products? Let me know in the comments. Well, I just transition my camera. There we 
go. That one was being a bit pedantic today. Let's get that one tightened back up. Okay. And we're back face to face. There we go. Let's put a little bit of light on the subject. So much easier. I'm loving my new lights. They're so much easier than my old ones. <laughs> I was so scared. It's funny. You get used to something, don't you? And sometimes change is hard. And um, I was so used to my old ones, even though they were clunky and things, and I was reluctant to change them for fear that I wouldn't get something that, you know, would be, that would work. But these ones have been perfect. So if anyone needs to know the types of lights that I use, if you want something similar, let me know. I'm happy to send you the information about them. But, um, but they've been great. So... Yep, so any more comments? Anything I missed? No, 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 no. Okay. Um, all right. So um, I will have, um, oh, remember too that if you're not subscribed to my newsletter, be sure to subscribe because um, I keep you up to date with everything that is happening in the Stampin' Up! world, any specials and sales and promotions that are coming up, my classes. Um, I put creative inspiration in there each week and um, sometimes there'll be extra tips and tricks and things like that. If you're new to subscribing, you will get um, an exclusive tutorial bundle of three um, projects. Now, I will be updating that when the new catalog comes out as well. So that'll be updated in the next couple of weeks um, with some new projects. So um, if you're not already subscribed, be sure to subscribe. Those that are already subscribe to my newsletter when I create that new PDF with those new projects you will all get that as well okay as um, a special gift for being a subscriber to my newsletter now one thing I didn't do which I just realized is I didn't put all of my links in um, the comments and I also even though I held up the um, the promo flyer for my product shares with the QR code I didn't put I just realized I don't think I put the link in the comments so I'm going to do that now and um, where's my keyboard there's my keyboard helps if I've got my keyboard um, so that you can all grab those links that you would like or if you would like to just have a look and see um, you can have a look so um, my product shares for the new catalog has just gone up in the comments and I'm going to add all my links so I've got one link that's called a link tree link and if you click on that it opens up um, a little page that shows you different places where you can go to see you might want to register for um, requesting a catalog or or register for my product shares or you might want to go to my YouTube channel or look at my blog or whatever they're all there listed in a list so it makes it super easy for you to navigate to where you want to go and what content of mine you would like to have a look at so I'm going to put that in the comments now too um, there you go so all you'll find all of my links there that link with all of my links will be in my YouTube channel um, so you'll be able to find that there as well alrighty well if there's no other questions and there's nothing else that I can help you with then um, I might let you all go one one last thing I didn't mention is if you love Stampin Up products and you would love to be part of a very special crafting community feel free to ask me about joining my team um, we have a beautiful community of lovely people uh, we do lots of fun things together. We um, have a little Facebook community as well where we post our projects and um, share things with each other in there. And I keep everyone up to date with what's happening. And we actually have a team um, lunch coming up next month as well. So that'll be a lot of fun. Um, so we do all, all sorts of different things throughout the year. And we have monthly team gatherings um, where we recognize our team members and then we have a little crafting session afterwards as well so that's always a lot of fun so if you'd like more information about that please let me know and especially with the new catalog coming up as well because surely you'll want a discount on all of those new products 
so you get a minimum 20% discount um, on Stampin' Up! products and you don't have to sell products and you're not locked in, you can leave at any time so um, don't be worried about that. But if you've got questions, feel free to ask me, I'm happy to answer them. Um, but yeah, so we would love to welcome uh, you into our beautiful community and we always love having um, new people join us. So yeah, I'll leave that with you to think about and you can let me know and ask any questions that you might have. But aside from that, I think that is all for this week. I hope you all have a fantastic week and uh, hopefully you get a little bit of crafting in there somewhere too. But I look forward to seeing you all again next Monday um, at 4 p.m. And we will probably be playing with some of the new products next week. So exciting, exciting. Um, so I look forward to chatting to you all and crafting along with you then. So have a great week, everyone. And as I always say, happy crafting. Bye.